So, as promised, Dan is here with that exclusive uh, interview with Ant McPartland because he's coming back to work. He was really open and, and honest with you. He was. So, I Even saw you was. discussing with Piers on yeah. Good Morning Britain a bit earlier. You know, why has Ant McPartland sure. decided to do this interview now? Why has he been so honest? And you know what I tell Lorraine? Why not? Because this is Ant's truth. He has decided to own it. And obviously, one of the things when I was talking to him about the prospect and the possibility of doing this interview was, well, why do you want to do it? What sure. do you want to achieve? And he's very, very clear. You know, he feels like after what he's gone through so publicly for the past two years, and because he has, let's be honest, millions and millions of fans mm -hmm. who follow everything he does, and of course we're very disappointed uh, with what happened with the drink drive incident last year, he he wanted to explain. Right. He wanted to justify, not justify, sorry, what he'd done. He wanted to apologise for it, but then explain how it happened and also start to change the discussion mm. in this country, Lorraine, around things like alcohol dependency, addiction, depression. Mm. Because as Ant says, as a 40-something-year-old bloke, northern bloke, Geordie bloke, yeah. he has never been good about discussing his feelings no, I get that. and what's going wrong in his life. And yeah. he said to me, actually, that for his entire life, he'd always felt like he was doing things for other people, trying to make other people happy. That's interesting, isn't and it? it? That it was that sort of underlying yeah, yeah, yeah. unhappiness in his life, which is actually what led to the alcohol dependency, right. the, the drug addiction, and then Jeez. that terrible, terrible car crash. But, you know... Can I just say as well, because another thing he's been criticised for, and it's very, very unfair in one of the newspapers today, he cares deeply for the other victims of that car crash. He actually said to me, Lorraine, he goes to bed every night and thanks God that no one was seriously injured in that mm. car accident because he knows that his life would be incredibly different uh -huh. if something had happened. That's very true. But at the same time, he feels like he has... Let the courts, you know, fine him £85,000, one of the toughest punishments ever given for a drink drive charge in this country. So he went through all of that. He then was hospitalised. He dealt with his own rehab himself. He took 10 months off. And now, having told his story, he wants to get back to work. He is like a new man, I have to tell you, because remember is I interviewed... Is it very different oh, from the last totally time? Because you interviewed different. him just after, didn't you? When just when he was going into rehab. Well, I feel like, you know, the phrase whole new man is bandied about yeah. all too often, but it absolutely is the case with Anne. He is confident, he is happy, he wants to own what's happened, he wants to help other people with it, but also, more importantly, he just wants to get back to his job. And, get and back to I normal? feel like yeah. he has a right to do that and I praise him for being so honest because just from the feedback that I had yesterday Lorraine when this interview ran in the sun on Sunday I have had literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people approach me to say can you pass this on to Ant I've been battling with uh, suicidal thoughts myself I've been battling with addiction the way that he's spoken about it has yeah. helped me and I think he should be praised for that that's good and uh, there's a lot more that we're going to talk about um, yes. including his new relationship and you know his new life uh, yeah. I guess. And also what he does have to say about that divorce yeah. and his ex-wife. I'll tell you about that later no, in the show. Dan is back now for more on that exclusive interview with Ant McPart. And we talked a lot earlier on about, you know, his back and talking to you in a very open way, um, especially about his new love. Now, you've said you've never seen him looking happier and he said that himself. Oh, absolutely. He said he feels the best he ever has in his life oh. and a big part of that is Anne-Marie Corbett. He, she is the woman, really, who became his rock, was there through all of the most difficult times. And it's absolutely fascinating when you think about how they got together, because remember, she was his personal assistant mm. for many, many years. And so Anne they know says, each other really well. Yeah, and Anne says, look, she was always there for me, but it didn't turn romantic until her marriage had ended, which happened before his did. Right. Then he became single. He went through that very traumatic period. Of course, she was there to support him. Uh, she was at the drink driving court case, saw him through all of the rehab. Mm -hmm. And at that point, he said, you know what? We both looked at each other. We weren't looking for anything. And we said, this, just so this feels so good. Right. Why should we fight it? Mm. And, of course, at the same time, this came as his marriage to Lisa Armstrong was ending. Of course, there was quite a bitter divorce battle going on, as you know. He sure. said he no longer speaks to Lisa. He would prefer... It's very sad, isn't it? It's, it is sad. When somebody's been with somebody for such a long time, it's a shame that it has to end in such a toxic way. It's just very sad. Of course, they were together 23 years and married for yeah. 11 years. But I think for him, it's been very difficult to see 
all of her social media posts and that type of thing because she has turned the marriage breakup into quite a public event, I guess. Both sides, though. I have to say both sides. I always think, you know, there's always more, there's always kind of more, more to it than that. And Hurley the dog was oh, there yes. for the Gosh. interview. And, of course, he is subject to this big, I know. big custody battle. He's now I know. the most famous dog in dog. the country, Lorraine yeah. Hurley. And says people come up to the street now, approach Hurley, give give him a big hug. But he says, look, obviously, both Lisa both and love him the doggy, love the dog. At the moment, they're sharing the custody. And, and, right. and, and, you know, he says Hurley has been very important because he's the one person, I guess, who gives him that total I love you unconditional say he's the one person, love. Because they are like people. He's like a little person. <laughs> well, you know, like with people. Angus, Absolutely, don't you? Absolutely. The are, other yeah. most famous dog in the country, <laughs> I think, these days. They are, they are like that. But, but you think he's in a good place? He's in a great place. He really is. This, this, this is someone who is very prepared to own his mistakes, own yeah. what he did in the past, all of the issues with the drink driving, but actually he does feel like he's got through it. He has mm -hmm. not had a drop of drink uh, for nine months. I found the way that he spoke about alcohol dependency very fascinating, Lorraine, because he said that it, it was indicative of the underlying unhappiness in his life. It wasn't like he was getting up in the morning immediately reaching for a no, drink, but no. there were some days when he would be so low that that is something that he would do behind Jeez, everyone's it's back. It's just remarkable, because on the outside... Because I don't... I obviously... I, of course, they're lovely, and I know them, mm. but I don't know them like friends. But from the outside, looking into their lives, you think it's golden. You think absolutely. it's absolutely golden, it's all good. How was he about that he wasn't on I'm a Celebrity, but Holly was? Was, yeah. was he able to talk about that? Yeah, no, he did, and he, he did she it. did a great job. He, and he, and she, he totally admits that Holly did a brilliant job. He wanted it to be Holly because they're great friends, they get sure. on with Makes each sense. other. But he does say it was incredibly difficult for him to see yep. Holly in his job. Obviously, this was a job that Dick and him have done for so many years. They turned the show into the phenomenon that it was, and it yeah. was the first time that he had to see his best mate, who, I'll come to it, but was very angry with him over the was situation. Was he? Now, what did he say to him then? Well, what he said is, look, obviously, I care about you first and foremost. This isn't about work. We right. have a love for each other as friends. But, but Ant says there, there were tensions there. He was angry about the drink drive conviction. But of what course. was interesting is he said, actually, at that point, it wasn't about work. Work didn't matter. It was about getting him right. He just and wanted his friend back, didn't absolutely. he? Absolutely. And Dick has been a saint through all of this. But the whole thing about Holly taking over I'm a Celebrity is it was the perfect arrangement for all three of them because they knew it was a one-year deal. Sure. And Ant is very adamant about the fact, you know, because there have been people saying, oh, what about bringing Holly in and yeah. doing it as a trio? And Ant's very adamant about the fact, no, 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 this year it back. will go back okay. to being Ant and Dick presenting yeah. I'm a Celebrity because that's... I mean, come on, Holly doesn't need another job, does she? She's got, <laughs> she's got she's so much okay. to do. She's <laughs> on telly all the time. <laughs> and and they fine. remain very close, obviously. Oh, OK.